welcome to my channel. This is the Sheila Beth Show, and as you can see today, I have a guest. Hi. This is my friend. You don't usually say hi. What's this happening? Listen, I'm, I'm really like feeling weird being on camera, but yeah. After a few minutes, you'll get used to it and you'll be comfortable. Yeah. So today we're doing a mukbang. I'm not so sure if you can see, but that's the food we have on the table. Um, she has put me on the spot. Yeah. I'm staying on camera and I'm eating on camera. She's now. eating on camera, but it's fun to yeah. eat and chat. It keeps it relaxed and fun. Um, so we're having falafel from Zucchini. I don't know if you guys have tried it, but this is a really good recipe. We'll see yeah. her review because it's her first time, time, so it'll be an honest review. Yeah. Yeah, so basically, um, S and I have known each other for so many years. We went to uni together. Yeah. Which we, year? <laughs> I don't think I would say which year. We say. Yeah, why not? Because it will give an idea of how long we've known <laughs> each other. Okay, fine. So, between 20... What did you meet? Did you meet, into, did you meet on the first year or second year? Because you were a year behind me. So, you remember I took oh, semester yeah, yeah, breaks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we went to USIU together and then I took t two semester breaks, which was almost like a year because oh, right. the guys I joined with graduated a year before me. Oh, okay, so okay. I met you when I came back, which was I think either 2009 or 2010. Ah, oh, okay. Then yeah, so we were already fine. Too. Yeah, we were fine too. How did you, do you remember how we met? It was a funny story because you were telling me about it. Tell me. Okay, so I shared a class with Angie. We were doing a, oh, a journalism class. Oh, Angie is my best friend. Yeah, she's one of Esther's best friends. Yeah. And we shared a print journalism class with her. And we had this, the same sense of humor. So, um, oh, yes. Angie, like, Angie and I would look, the lecturer would say something and we'd both find it funny. Yeah. So we'd look at each other and just like chuckle under our breath. And we ended up being friends that way. So yeah. somehow, because you guys were really, really close, we all we would hang out all of us yeah. together. And then me and you became friends. So I always yes. Angie always says I took her friend. But they were yeah, like because now she the and I are close. Now we're so close. Yeah. Like, when was the last time you talked to Angie? Um well online, <laughs> does that count? Yeah. But when we have like you have events with your big group of friends, yeah. like Kinakora, the whole group. Mm -hmm. So that's when I think the last time I saw Angie was your birthday. Remember how it happened? We used to hang out together and then Angie was doing a gig for her friend. Mm -hmm. Um it was like a, an online I don't know, I can't remember what she was doing, but she was like really into this job aside mm -hmm. hustle and she was making good money. Like really good money for uni. Okay. So there's this one time we were both <laughs> hungry. No, what okay, let me tell you. You remember that? I have a bad memory. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot that. that. So That's I don't true. remember anything. Even when like Because this cousin, is the story you told me. I'm not the one who's coming up with Yeah, my cousin tell me stories about my past. I listen yeah. like I wasn't there, it's about me. Yeah. So Angie says I'm the best person to tell secrets because I'm Because you forget so you can anyway, so, so what happened? Yeah, so one day we were hanging out with Angie, she was so busy with this thing, she didn't want to go for lunch, but we were both really hungry. So she's like, Why don't you guys just go together? And you were nervous about it. <laughs> I don't know why you were Because I'm an introvert, I just don't yeah. think like new situations but I've been trying to put myself And I was just like, yeah, there. let's go, yes. And we hit it off. <laughs> we hit it off immediately and yeah. started hanging out all the time. And so over the years, like, we've, we've grown. We have. We've grown so much. And we <laughs> and take a bite. Yeah. I have put, like, everything inside here. Mm. So I'll take So you get bite. falafel, you it's get some not. hummus, baba ganoush. Especially because I'm a meat lover. Yeah, sorry. But, yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the vegetarian side of life. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. It's good, like it's really nice. Yeah. yeah. And it's fresh because it's like a salad. Yeah, it's yeah. like a snack. Yeah. It's like a meat. Snack. <laughs> Typical Kenyan. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we, we went for lunch and then we started hanging out, and even our friendship has evolved over the years because of like who we were really then and who we are now. So recently we were having a conversation um, on the phone, and we just realized, like, these conversations aren't had as much. People don't talk about like how you evolve over the years, how your experiences, whether good or bad. Yeah, especially because me and Sheila, when we talk yeah. on the phone, like yeah. we go in, it's just hi, how are you doing? But yeah. then we find ourselves going so in into body image, yeah. self consciousness, love, heartbreaks, and we're like, why don't you just document these conversations? Yes. Yeah. We are always talking about them. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think there's space for these kind of conversations online. We both are very interested in personal growth or self-development yeah. and like really just learning more about yourself through your experiences as you grow. If you make mistakes, try to figure out yeah. like what made you do or choose certain paths and how you want to change it. So how would you say for you it started like that deliberate journey to kind of grow as a person? Okay. I don't know if I can say there was a 
okay, yes, I think there was a time where it was deliberate. Yeah. But I think ever since, like, even uni days, mm. I remember, like, Bien, yeah. like, they used to call me Miss Morals. Oh, really? Because I was just different. Like, I used yeah. to question so many things. I yeah. just question, like, okay, why are we doing this? Then why should we do this? Like, yeah. Even if people are doing it, like, yeah. I don't want to do it as well. Mm -hmm. So I found myself always wanting to be different. Or rather, just finding myself different. And then mm. I question friendships. Because you see in uni, you find that you have so many friends but they're drinking buddies or just hang out buddies. Yeah, it was a lot of like, all yeah. party together. Exactly. But so you don't even know you people. You don't know them. So we used to yeah. have a circle of friends that we'd meet yeah. every weekend. And yeah. I remember asking Angie, like, these friendships are fake. And they used to mm. laugh. They're like, yeah, I start a kunyo. You like, say that to Yeah, and then they like, I start a kunyo. And then she started telling us, oh, guys, are we really friends? But it's not good. <laughs> friends like yeah. come to think of it like yeah. maybe somebody's really going through something but mm. all we do is meet and go out yeah. i don't know anything there's a time i was like we we're talking about tribes yeah. we said asking each other what tribe are you we realized oh, we I don't even know <laughs> we don't even know what <laughs> tribe like, we are but we hang out oh. all the time and mm -hmm. we're calling ourselves like really good friends yeah so i think it's it's been a progress of yeah. like trying to understand life and stuff like that but i feel like how it really hit was in 2014 when i had like the worst heartbreak of my life and it was bad mm. and i was depressed mm. and, and then that's when now through healing i started realizing yes i was hurt by this boy but yeah. it wasn't really about this boy like there was so many other layers to yeah. to the pain like that how, i was feeling like maybe why were you drawn to this particular exactly and person? why is why it hurting you? so bad when ah. you've broken up with somebody who wasn't even good to you in the first place why are you depressed you know That's and i said yeah i said asking yeah. myself questions and i realized i had many things in me that even drew me to him and things that also made me break up with him and things that like parents you know yeah. had, like issues with my parents feeling abandoned I think abandonment mm. issues or mm. detachment issues mm -hmm. and those things made me cling to this guy so yeah. much because Could you identify I was identifying with him? exactly. Ah. So I realized when, when it was taken away, it was like an idol. Like yeah. it was taken away, it's like okay, so what else? What do I cling to yeah, now? So, like, do I have I have? To. so then yeah. I started like healing and and then ended up healing with healing with parents, mm. healing with friends. Wow. And the whole breakup was it just spiral into it was a whole, whole thing. thing that changed mm. Who I am, like even now when I look at myself, I'm like, would I really date that guy? Yeah. Who I am right now, I don't think so. So you can. So you say you, you were such a different person between then totally and now. Totally different. So for me, the difference is, I I was always like, I think this is part of why we got along. Yeah. I'm trying to remember what kind of conversations we used to have in uni because <laughs> I always used to have introspective. Those, we used to have those types of conversations and yeah. we used to argue and fight yeah. a lot because we had big <laughs> very strong <laughs> opinions yes. about different things. <laughs> yeah. And people would be like, it's not that deep. It's not that deep. You know, why you guys so intense? But we are intense because it's like. She has a view and I have a view and we yeah. spent hours just talking about our views. Yeah. And I was just telling you recently that I feel like our views of different things, yeah. although somebody looking out into yeah. the friendship, be like, oh, these guys fight a lot, they argue a lot. Mm. But I feel like those fights and those arguments have made us so like close really right know now. Each other. And like really know Sheila each other. About this. Exactly. Like about I know this. what yeah. what Sheila likes, what yeah. Sheila doesn't like. Yeah. When I don't know a call. Yeah. Like, because let me be honest, so I think Amongst my friends, you you were one of the few who were not judgmental. Like you would directly, and part of the honesty for me is like a really important thing. So even if, if you disagree with me, for you to be honest about that. So you were one of the, and I have, because I had a bunch of friends, which yeah. I've never been a big circle person. I would have close friends in different like groups. But you were, you were one of my friends who, yes, you thought what I said was sometimes weird or so different. Yeah. And you're just like, why? Like, why do you think like this? Why does this matter to you? But you would ask me that, yeah. and then I would now be able to explain to you, oh, this is why I think like this, and this is why I, this is important to me. So over time, you would now start to understand yeah. me because you ask the questions. And but I have friends who just be like, you're weird. Yeah, it's just weird. It's like, like, yeah, but also you just be chalked out to, oh, she looks at you on paper, me and you are very different. Yeah. We've just yeah, got to true. really understand each other and, and accept and respect differences. our differences. Because yeah. even during Sheila's wedding, I was yeah. trying to buy her a gift. And so 
I wanted to buy her yeah. a pillow that was written Mr. and Miss and yeah. then the name of like her, the last name of her husband. Mm. But knowing her, I was like, hmm, you know what? Let me call this girl because mm. how I know her, <laughs> she might she might not have taken this guy's name. Yeah, because I just because we had conversations. Had conversations you know, and you've also money. changed because there was a time you didn't want to get married. Mm. So I know you've changed mm. to the point where you've gotten married. But I was like, let me first be sure yeah. on this. And I called. I was like, but hey, you're gonna be Mr. and Miss. She was like, no, I'm not taking. His last name was like, oh, so I just wrote me say Miss. Yeah. Can you, can you, can you. <laughs> and actually, it's funny because then I told you, oh, it's fun, you can put it as Mr. and Mrs., but there's no last name yeah. that's, uh, that's shared between us. And I remember you saying, okay, so you did it. And then when I was doing the video, because I did another video where I talked about now my, keeping my maiden name, mm -hmm. and I was thinking, how, actually, you know, what happened is we went on a, like a mini honeymoon mm -hmm. and then I was signing this form, I was mm -hmm. filling this form and I was like, oh, now I can write Mrs. <laughs> but then I wrote Mrs. and my surname remains as Bet. So I was like, I can't be Mrs. Bet, that's my mom's, that's my mom's mm -hmm. name. She's Mrs. Bet, I can't be Mrs. my dad's name. Mm -hmm. So then I realized, oh, I have to find a title that's more neutral. And so the pillow says Mrs. But now I realize it doesn't really work when you don't take the name because yeah. Mr. Oh, yeah, Mr. Yeah, yeah. is of Mr. Mm -hmm. So that's why the F is added. Right, right. you are so you someone miss. of. So I'm Miss, but not M I S S. Mm -hmm. I am M S. Which oh, can right. feel for someone who's not married, we single, don't. widowed. It just mm -hmm. feels in for everyone. And I think it's also more fair because men keep their Mr. So it's also fair that I just, even if I change it to Miss from M I S S to M S. Guys, I hope this is not too confusing, but, but yeah, busy. the point, point is, is <laughs> let me ask you yeah. now, because you asked me, like, yeah. what was the point for you to feel like you were growing and changing, or the journey had begun, or whatever? So, interestingly, we have a similar beginning, in the sense that I was always a little different, and my difference was, I was very inquisitive, and I was inquisitive about everything. So, if... When I asked questions, sometimes I would ask questions that people don't generally ask. Mm -hmm. And then they'd be like, what? what? So some people tried to, like, they were fascinated by that, but some people just thought, oh, Sheila, you know? Mm -hmm. I always did that. I had, there's other things which I'm not going to mention, but I had a lot of things I questioned. And yeah. Very, like, very vocally, I was very vocal about these things. But my childhood, up to my teenage years and up to uni, I had a very sheltered life. So I didn't really experience life in a way that it pushed me to want to grow as a person. But I did now have, start to have experiences now in my adult life. Like maybe work challenges, uh, relationships that were very... <clears throat> the work for you. What? Yeah, I had some... Yeah, I had some difficult work situations where yeah, I was struggling yeah. between because I would have a job where I just really love what I'm doing and I'm so into it and I'm those people who when I'm into something I go 100% yeah. into it. But then I would have maybe a colleague or, or a, a boss who's not the kindest person, who's not very nurturing in terms of my growth in my career and that sort of thing. So I would be in conflict about, okay, should I stay? For different people, it's yeah. different things. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes it could even be something good. It could be mm. a newfound love, yeah. and you found this person, and you're into them, you just and you're like, you want to be I, I just need to be better mm. to be with this person. Maybe it's a new environment, yeah. you're in a new city, yeah. with new people, and yeah. you have to adjust yeah. to fit into that, and yeah. you find that you have to change a lot of things about, about you. you. Yeah. Yeah. For some, it's heartbreak, like me. Like mm. you're in a bad. Bad place, you know, mm. heartbroken, like something just like newfound love. Mm. Heartbreak just comes. It can yeah. be family, it can be a death, it can be a relationship, a friendship that has yeah. failed. Mm. And from then you start asking yourself some questions like, okay, what about me did this, or how can I fix it, or what can I do to gain from this? Yeah. And then others, it's ambition. You want to be the president of this country one day. So you have to be so a you have to start changing. Yeah, you have to start yourself. changing everything yeah. mm. so that you can live up to the potential that you've already put in for yourself. Yeah. And for yeah. some people, it's just they hit the state they're in. Yeah. Everything you've been doing has not been working. Everything has been the same. And you're sick of yeah. You're yeah, partying. Of that. It's the same result. You yeah. drink too much. The same result. You're dating the same type of people. The same. You're like you. I'm tired. Yes. Yeah this um, cycle and yeah. to change, to yeah. change the cycle. So I feel like for people, other people, it's just different. It's all different things, but something has to happen. The post I wrote on Facebook, and yeah. I'm telling you about it, mm. because I wrote it, like in my second year, I'm trying to grow, yeah. and then you came there with your comments, hey, 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 hey. And I was like, 
what's funny and just the post is funny and i'm like what's funny i'm actually really going through As you something i've grown a lot <laughs> right now so what i had written was yeah. for a seed yeah. to achieve its potential everything <laughs> I'm so sorry. everything I'm trying to relate me to that i know <laughs> everything falls apart yeah you know, everything falls apart the the leaves the what are they the seed falls apart yeah. whatever to grow into whatever if it's a fruit or yeah. whatever like a case a tree. for somebody mm-hmm. who's looking on the outside it yeah. looks like destruction yeah but for the seed it's growth that was deep and she wrote hey 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 hey, hey. When I was in my moment, she goes <laughs> deep. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so I feel like I'm sorry, I'm going to make it sound weird. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that's what it is. For everyone yeah. around me, look that's like, actually humbling. <laughs> for everyone around me, look like yo, yes, get over this person. Yeah. And I'm like, it's not even about this person anymore. No, I mean, I'm in a whole other dimension right now. Yeah. Going through a lot. Yeah. I'm not coming out with you guys anymore. Mm. Then people are like, you can't just be staying in the house, but. can't be with you guys like yeah. there's something that's happening in me and that I, cannot, I need to focus yeah, on yeah i cannot be with you i can't yeah. you okay. get and so it looks like distraction but mm-hmm. it's really not distraction because the other <laughs> side is so beautiful only if you if mm-hmm. you go through the journey because people get halfway and they're like i it's not that deep it's too much. i'm not doing this i'm mm-hmm. losing friends mm-hmm. I'm, i'm losing myself but the other side is beautiful that's all it is did you just lose friends or did you drop people as well cuz yeah, i feel like i, I had phases where i just drop yeah, people. people like drop no yeah. questions yeah. i was just like i as you know i'm dropping you're not like you're not, we're not exactly yeah. not, we're not we're not we're not anymore we're not feeding at all what i'm trying to go exactly. for yeah. and then there's some who have been friends with them for a very long time i'm not going to drop them but our dynamic of our friendship changed how would you say like in what sense does it do you see each other less like, no 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 it changes? no it changes like Like for me before then yeah. I was not a born again Christian. Mm. So there was things I was open to doing because we were all friends. Okay. And I've kept the same friends but even when they're around me there are things they know yeah. I'm not going to take part in. It's not an easy journey. Yeah. It's something you have to uji to me like send yourself. Like, well, you have to be forced to do it. Or, like you yeah, have to be in a situation where it's do or die. So you either do better or stay stay yeah. stay in a stay in a state of also hope you don't get there. you don't get to the point where you have to be. but also isn't it life life that's just not happens like, please no it it can be different things it doesn't have to be ex- like a tragedy yeah. but it can be something that like pushes you against the wall enough for you to ask yourself wait am i doing things but how the way i want to do it if you just decide oh if you just decide then it's kind of like you know what i'm going to start this journey you know what i would actually want to hear from people who just decided on their yeah. own and what prompted you to think You know what I feel like I, there is some work yeah. I need to do on myself and what how yeah. you want to go I feel also sometimes it. it's a, it's a report effect yeah. like you yeah. start going to the gym you're like okay I think I'm going to start going to the gym working on myself yeah. the more you go to the gym you're like maybe I might read a book maybe I might or maybe listen. you go to the gym and then you meet someone who's reading books and telling you about it and you're like hmm that sounds interesting yeah, maybe I want to try it effect. okay it's like changing yeah. everything when the music I listen to yeah. I just changed everything except and reggae <laughs> reggae man reggae reggae for damn nobody can stop reggae <laughs> yeah. how does it look like the journey of, of working on yourself i feel like it? my journey when it came in phases so like i said it was different things yeah. that were kind of challenging me a little bit pushing me outside of my comfort zones mm-hmm. and i would start questioning like is this how i want to do things is this where i want to work is this mm-hmm. how i want my career to, to grow is this useful for me and i would be in a relationship that is just like really just very toxic i mean that's just the word that that's <laughs> it <laughs> so very toxic you can very like just a lot of pain a lot of being even miserable sometimes yeah. thinking, and maybe when I'm actually not happy you know really not happy is toxic yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean the person you're with is toxic. It's toxic maybe both of you are just toxic for each other yeah maybe maybe they have certain habits that yeah. set you off and then you have you kind of react in ways that are also toxic so for me i think there was a point where i would i would start to think like is this Sheila? like is mm. who i am here is this me in my essence this is who i really truly am if i was in a different situation would i be the same person and i remember just feeling like 
there were times like in this, I had a long relationship which there were break breakups in between, and I remember just being like, I like how we're telling each other this that we don't know this story. Like we don't know these stories. <laughs> so, she had like three. Okay. Um, yeah, but you know, in between when I was like on my own, I would be so free. I would feel mm. like a child. I'd be so without a care in the world. I'd be like happy. I'd be dancing in the house, and I'm just cooking. I'd just be. So I'd feel this sense of freedom and this sense of joy, which I didn't really feel generally when I was with that person. So I think it started making me think, oh, maybe this isn't, yeah. you know, maybe this isn't working. Maybe this isn't my ideal. Maybe this isn't where I want to be. Wow. And I, it was weird. It happened in phases because I was like, maybe I would figure out, huh, I'm happier without this person. But then <laughs> I'd be like, oh, let me just get back with them because, you know, we've been so together different. a long time. That's so so we should at least try and, you know, make like it work. That's so different. From yeah. Because they make it. Just to just add on like mm. how you said when you were alone, it yeah. was making you happy. Yeah. It's so different because for, for me, when I was alone mm. and it wasn't there, I would feel empty. That's the dependence <gasps> that I had. Oh. Like it was so dependent, like I needed this person. So when you were with really, this person, you felt happy. And not happy, but you felt it like was a dependence. Had someone. Yeah, it was just a dependency mm. that wasn't healthy. Yeah. It wasn't healthy. Yeah. Because when he wasn't around, I'd feel empty. That's yeah. not. That's not how it's supposed to be. No, because you, you someone should fill you up. You, you, you build your own happiness. Only yeah. you can make yourself happy. Yeah. Even your husband, your boyfriend, they can't make you happy. You have to be happy. You have first. to come happy. Yeah, and come share happy happiness. and then let's share. But yeah. for me, it was like. When they're not there, it came to a point where even if we'd argue and you hang up, yeah, I would feel like you have like you've taken the oxygen. Yeah, you stabbed me twenty times just because you hung up on me. It was a rejection thing that was inbuilt in me. So, so you would say you things. were codependent. Yeah, in completely, completely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so continue. Oh wow, that's really interesting. So I, I don't know. I, I had breaks in between which were giving me like a different perspective of this is how it is when you're with this person, this is how it is when, when you're, you're not. not with this person. Mm -hmm. And I preferred not when I was not with this person. Yikes. But I also felt a sense of responsibility for the relationship to continue mm -hmm. because I had carried on as long as I had. And there were also like betrayals I had yeah. done to myself, <laughs> which were like, okay, but you've done this, so why are you now suddenly thinking, oh, that's a boundary, yeah. uh, it's being overstepped. Like, you've allowed this boundary to be overstepped before. So I think for me, it, it took some time because I also had to accept that maybe it was a sense of failure. Yeah, Like if this was. thing ends, I'm failing because yeah. I, I didn't make it work. So yeah. eventually I realized I'm not, like I don't even want this. Yeah, I didn't want things, which I want now. <laughs> My friends know, yeah. yeah. Like marriage, like kids, you know, I, I didn't want that stuff. And later I started to realize when you're not in the right environment for you to grow into that that version of yourself, if you like are someone who wants to have a family and all that, yeah. then you don't desire those things because you can't like see them in the future. Right. You mean like you need to surround yourself with the things that you want or the journey that you, you need to extract you need, yourself. Hi, oh, that's so interesting. Because so I think, think the one of the for reasons, somebody who's look who's watching and yeah. they're like, okay, I want to, to do this. I would like to work on myself but yeah. to go through this process. Yeah. But what does it look like? Like give me the real like because everybody oh, talks it about like, everybody mm. talks about working on themselves yeah. and like, how to advise. And it sounds so romantic but, but it's what, not. what what's the journey like like Okay, so of course there's a lot of I, I think mostly to me, uh, in my experience, it starts with pain. It starts yeah. with an excruciating pain and then you're like okay, we can't live in pain, what can we do, like, yeah. how can we stop this pain? And then you start to now ask yourself questions like, is there, is there an alternative to yeah. this? Like, is there another way to do things? Is there another way to live? And then now you ask yourself, like, what are your dreams? What do you like? What do you enjoy? How do you see, like, if you look at your life 10 years from now, if you're just fantasizing, what does it look like? And then you ask yourself, like, is, are you going in that direction right now? Like, everything that you're doing, is it leading you to that yeah. place? And when you realize it's not, now you start to ask questions. So the journey is quite um, lonely. It's, it's lonely. It's kind of unpredictable because you don't know when you get the answers. You start asking questions. Yeah. But the answers come when they come or when you're ready. I feel <laughs> they come they because come the journey is that's why it's a journey. Yeah. I feel like everything starts working in your favor yeah. like in, in its own time. Yeah. Like, things and it might be a long time of nothing is going time. the way you want. Everything nothing starts is making falling sense. into place. 
pole pole mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. then as well it's very lonely it's very painful but all, are, like you said your friends were there people when you were starting when you're just at the beginning of your journey who you would try to talk about this yeah with, and they were just like what the heck is she everybody about? was telling me get over it like just move on just mm -hmm. i'm like no i really cannot stop right now if i yeah. stop right now i don't even know who i am i'm in the middle if I stop right now, I don't even know who I am right now. I either wow. go on mm. or I stop and I it just mess everything. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, the journey is lonely, the journey is long sometimes, and the journey also is and a journey. And there's uncertainty, those places exactly. that you don't even know, like, what the hell okay, am I growing? Am I actually getting better? Am I, am I, just am I, lost? Like, am I lost? You know? <laughs> you my mind. Yeah. But all I can say is that, the, like, I think we can both agree, having yeah. gone through different journeys in a different way, yeah. I think we can both agree yeah. that the end is beautiful. Because nobody can take away... You can always not recognize yeah. how far you've come And along. nobody can take that away from you. They no. can't take away anything. And then anything, any decision you make yeah. of who you are right now yeah. is so strong-rooted because it, come, it comes with a lot from of things. From deep inside. Yeah, it's not just coming with a tea. Oh, somebody told me this is what it is. So mm. that's what it is. No, it's mm. coming so strong-rooted and that's why you're so rooted in it and you believe in it. Mm. And even if you do, because you see the journey doesn't stop. I can't really mm. say yeah, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. I know I'm going to change more things, but even when I'm changing, yeah. I'm not changing in a point of uncertainty. I'm changing mm. it. Yeah, actually this is something I should change. And I accept yeah. it and I, and I move. It's not like kitambo, I feel. And I think one of the things, just like you mentioned, sorry, let me finish eating first. <laughs> mm -hmm. One of the things that happens when you're on that journey of growing, you realize that you're more open to being wrong. Exactly. That, oh, actually, the, this part of me is kind of messed up. Exactly. I need to fix it, and, I, know? and I don't mind yeah. being wrong. Last week, I was having a phone conversation with a yeah. friend, mm -hmm. and every time we have a conversation with him, he keeps saying, "You know, I really love talking to you. You really build me up. The mm -hmm. things you tell me that help me. Sometimes I might not fully agree with you, but I love talking to you." Mm -hmm. Then, at the second time, he said the same thing. You know, sometimes you might not be so right, and then I stopped him. I'm like, "Why is it when I'm not right, you can't tell me?" If there's something you don't agree with, mm. why can't you tell me? Mm. It's like, because I don't want us to... I'm like, no, 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 no. I might... Your opinion might be something that might change something. It might help me. It might help me. I'm like, yeah. please, don't mm. feel any type of way to tell me if I'm wrong. I don't mind because I know it's coming from a place of love. Just tell me when I'm wrong. I don't mind. But before... Oh, <gasps> my God. Oh, my gosh. You've just reminded me because I feel like when I started, I was in a very vulnerable space. Yeah. <laughs> But I was open because I was like, oh, I want to, I want to see, yeah. I want to fix whatever it is that I'm doing wrong, or whatever it is that I'm kind of allowing this to happen. Because I think it's also yeah. there's this sense of responsibility. As long as you don't take responsibility for things that happen to you and your part in it, because you always have some part. Absolutely. Either you allowed people to overstep step your boundaries and they hurt you, and then you allowed them again, and that's why they constantly you played a role. Somehow. You played some kind of role. Yeah. So even if someone is a villain in this story, you have like you're the only person who can fix whatever's going on with you, exactly. either by leaving or whatever. So for me, I think at the beginning I started to I was open, and then I kind of somehow because I was still in a very negative space of I'm so hurt, I'm so yeah. like I'm so I'm so very like annoyed by all the things that have happened. It's so unfair, blah blah blah. I attracted the wrong people. Mm. So in, in that beginning, I would attract people who kind of would feel that sense of like weakness, I guess, yeah. like a sense of weakness. And these are the people who, they would point out those things that are imperfect about you, but it wasn't coming from a good place. Yeah. So it wasn't like meant to build you or help you grow and become better. It was meant to kind of also them latching on and getting some kind of control of your life yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or an aspect of your life. Yeah. Either it's a friend or whatever. But someone who wants to, like, feels like, oh, I can, I can kind of, it's like an opening. It's like and I can, digging. It's like I can digging. Dig it. Like parasites, exactly, basically. Yeah. So there's also that. I don't know if you experienced this thing of meeting people who were not the best people for you. I think for me, time. I can say I didn't. Yeah. Mainly because I feel like God or worked it out in that the people I was with during that moment were the people I just needed to be. There might have been two or three, but those are the only people I was seeing. And I was uh, feeding, feeding, feeding so much into yeah, my journey. Yeah. Feeding and feeding and feeding. 
Yeah. So we went where I had forgotten about all these other people. Yeah. And now it was a shocker when I came out. And then you're and like, oh, I the, <laughs> the same people that yeah. were are doing the same thing. And I'm like, oh, how do I fit in now? Because I was so away. Wow. I had a mix myself. though. Yeah, and like, now I've ah, come back. Yeah. How do I plug in and still maintain myself? And still not how, like I'm not a full, completely new person. Exactly, like mm. how do I plug in? So that's, that's, yeah. that's what I went through. You have your definition of love. Mm. I have my definition of love because of our experiences. I have my definition of pain. Mm -hmm. You have yours. Mm. So then we come together and when you start growing, you start yeah. looking at my definition of things. Is it the right definition? Is it a definition that I want to still subscribe to? Mm. Or is it a definition I want to let go of? Because the definition of love that I had was an, a, a weird attachment that mm. is strange. Yeah. And then I'm like, no, that's not what I want to be love anymore. And that's what growth is. Is you removing your dictionary and going through your dictionary that has built you over yeah, time. Yeah, I and, can so relate and, to that. Yeah, yeah. and see, is this yeah. what I want? You know, mm. your definition of beauty, yeah. your definition of so many things. Like yeah. for me, I used to, I grew up watching a lot of American, just like all Kenyan people, and yeah. some operas, and there was Esmeralda, and there was this girl, she had mm. green eyes, yeah, she was wearing Esmeralda. something, mm. but she was so pretty. I remember I was just like, I want, I wish I had green eyes and really? long hair. Yeah, yeah, I wish I had green eyes and long hair and wings. But anyway, I don't think there's anybody who looks like Esmeralda in Kenya. You know, that was what I was saying. Uh, Till I went to high school. Yeah. And this girl, a yeah. newcomer, comes. She has gray eyes. She has long hair. She's mm -hmm. a light skin. I was yeah. like, oh my God. I wish I looked like her. She's so beautiful. Gosh, that's because crazy. that was the definition of beauty that I had grown up because with. Because you saw it because on TV. TV things I had seen. So when I saw you know, her, that's so funny. I never did that. Okay, the only things I did. So my nose has a bit of a like a sharpness to it, which is not very typical. Like mine. Yeah, we we both <laughs> <laughs> we both have that. So I think when I was younger, because most movies had white people, with that's the one thing noses. I was like, oh, this is kind of similar to those guys. Yeah. But then, or maybe we blow dry your hair yeah. and then I would do those like top hats, you know, like how the boys used to have their hair kind of go yeah. around. I did those, but I didn't do it for so long because somehow, because I, the people I saw when I went to school, I remember even like the dark skinned kids, I used to feel like, oh, that girl is so pretty. Wow. Was, so I never had that definition because in Canada, it's like there's a lot of colorism where lighter people were always considered pretty, even in primary, like we yeah. were 12 years old and the boys were like, saying number one to ten of the prettiest girls in school and they were all light skin yeah. except maybe one girl who had like really long hair. I would look at features and I found mm -hmm. different features. But you beautiful. find that maybe that's something to do with the way you grew up. That you were not able it's to might be, yeah. thing. You get it it's because for be. me that girl was so pretty because of Esmeralda and all that stuff. But, but were you not told you were pretty? I was, was told like, I was pretty. But so I that, you didn't believe it. I did believe I was pre I was pretty, uh -huh. but I had seen Esmeralda and, and you said that, that to me pretty, that was like the, the definition uh, yeah. of beauty and she was mm -hmm. on TV and everything and everything. Yeah. But then now after working on yourself in yeah. Esther 2.0, to yeah. me I just believe that I'm beautiful. Not because I'm light yes. skin, not because of whatever. I'm just beautiful because I am wonderfully made and I love how I look and even the flaws that I want to change. If I can change them, I'll change them. If I yeah. can't, yeah. I'll embrace them. Yeah. And I've learned to see beauty in everybody else because mm -hmm. there's a way, I feel like what you listen to, what you watch, who you talk to, who you yeah. hang around with, yeah. they form a, a big part of your dictionary. Yeah, and before true. you know it, you're in... Nairobi, yeah. and you're thinking you're acting like a thug in New York, <laughs> 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 it's so like you're gonna be in New York, and yeah. you have so much slang that's from all different parts of the states. Like, honestly, and you can have an identity say, crisis. N word, Ken Kenyans using N word is so just weird to me. Like, what? <laughs> what? Well, I'm sorry, but that N word and the B word, I just don't trust the B word. I hate it. Yeah. Although there's a funny time in my in uni where a friend of mine used to call people that, but then I always just felt like cringe yeah. about that word. I don't cuss though. I stopped. I, I stopped cussing. I, cuss, I, I don't I use derogatory words. Yeah, I, I feel like cussing is at least you know. <laughs> like That's for me, I'm not I mean, I get yeah. Like for me, it wasn't even a thing. Yeah. And I wouldn't say I stopped cussing because I got. Like I got one again. I stopped mm -hmm. cussing way before that. I just sat down. I told I was very reflective. Yeah. And I was like, I used to give myself weird challenges. Sometimes I'd be like, I'm not drinking for two years. Oh yeah, I would and I have no reason. <laughs> I'm not just drinking. To see if you yeah, I'm not gonna drink. Let me just hang. Yeah. And so this day I was just like, I'm not gonna cuss anymore. 
because I used to cuss a lot, and I'm like, I'm, I'm making, you did, huh? Yeah, and I'm like, I'm making yeah. very good points. But it's so long ago, I can't even yeah. remember. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm making very good points, but yeah. the minute I cuss, it just spells what I'm trying to say. Let me find out. No, for me, but yeah, for okay. me, I was like, <laughs> let me find words to fill in. Yeah, and just and make my points. Your vocabulary. And increase my vocabulary. <laughs> yeah. and stop cussing. Yeah, and then I just stopped, and now when I cuss or if I find myself cussing, it feels so weird. Like, who's that? Yeah. It just feels very strange because yeah. that's also what growth does. You it's grow. It's so funny for me. I used to cuss even as a kid, but I was a rebel, so I was told not to cuss. I would cuss in my head. Like, I cussed a lot in my head. And then there was this one time I had a lot to drink in uni. I was like a pirate. That's I was so funny because me, I stopped cussing. And guys were just like, what, Sheila? I stopped you know? cussing to the point where I listened to a song, and then when the castle comes, I just feel myself quiet. Well, no, that's me with the N word and the B word. Yeah. Actually, I don't listen to songs that say much of that. Okay. Yeah. So since you've been doing that job of like improving yourself and working on yourself, how do you think you can tell uh, like someone who's done it? Can you tell? Yeah, I feel like yeah. you can. Mm -hmm. Okay, I usually have this analogy that I say. Yeah. For example, you go to school. Yeah. You go to school. You go to uni. You get yeah. a degree or a master's, a PhD, whatever. And then you start applying for jobs mm. because you know what you've done in school and you know you have a phd yeah. you're not gonna apply for a junior position you're going to even overlook the junior positions and be like no this is what i feel like mm. i should apply for and the companies you've been applying for you're like okay this is where i think i should work based on the work that i've done so someone who's worked on themselves will yeah. carry themselves like that mm. they can put in the They're work they're more self-assured yeah i you know what they deserve exactly i put okay. in the work so yeah. you can even tell from how i'm carrying myself yeah. from who i'm associating myself with yeah. if they say they're not going to do something mm. it's because they know i said it's deep rooted things yeah and sometimes as it means so it's a self-awareness like exactly self-aware self -aware. and you know talking from sometimes getting to, know getting to know each other you yeah. get and it's also not just talking yeah. it's what you're talking about yeah. sometimes you're asking each other those hard questions yeah. you, you talk about your fears or whatever yeah. you find you born even faster yeah. Yeah. than somebody who you've known and people will have those conversations people who've worked on themselves will be comfortable exactly those are the type of conversations you're going to have yeah, immediately that's true. Mm. we talk about our dreams we talk about the fears our heartbreaks and it won't even feel some type of way no it'll but be so sometimes natural. if you meet somebody in a week's time mm. you haven't even scratched the surface you yeah. haven't talked about anything and wow. already they're saying they want to date you yeah. that shows me you haven't put in the work because if you had put in the work you'd want to know if i yeah. am worth your time and if i am worth dating you yeah. whether i'm pretty or not whether i'm beautiful or not what what do i stand for for me to be able to, to but let me you? ask you an honest question how many people do you think do that? Have an in-depth knowledge That's the of the thing. person that we not to That's me. why COVID made so many relationships end because exactly. they're like, who, who is this person? person? <laughs> what the hell did I marry? I think I felt like emotion. Yeah. I was just like it? going through a lot of things and I was not dealing with it and I was like, uh, -uh I need to start being emotional and in touch with my emotions. So I create time to really cry and i just go and be like on friday i'm going to go and if i need to cry i'm going to cry it out and nowadays i cry like I, i'm really in touch with my emotions by the way when you get in touch it's like tears yeah, yeah. i cry happy tears, crazy, all the tears i cry i was also similar i didn't schedule my, yeah. my um, cry sessions or anything but i would I would be, want to be alone when I'm crying. I didn't want anyone to yeah. see me. It was like something of a weakness, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, for me, what happened is I never used to cry for the longest time. And I remember I, when I was like, say, in uni or something, or after uni, I used to say, my last time crying, I was yeah, like 13, thank you. but I was 11. And then suddenly I was crying all the time. <laughs> Happy tears, bad tears. And there was a time I went everything. to a, through a session where I was not applying makeup. It wasn't for anything, it was because I wanted to understand what makeup means to me. Because I used to have a lot of like acne issues and mm. I was so dependent on yeah. makeup, like I wouldn't leave the house without makeup and if somebody told me And I'm sure yeah, to and if somebody told me this. you're so pretty and it was a deal that I didn't have makeup I'd be like Are I need to wait me? till you see me with makeup and you know what pretty is. Like in my mind I'll just be like, How can you tell me I'm pretty and I and I haven't done anything to But I told you that I was like, You have really beautiful skin. Yeah. Because there's the, there's the glow that the natural skin has, that makeup, it's, it's gonna exactly. try, but it can't really be exactly. Nowadays, that. it's very rare no. that I apply makeup. I mm. go to work without makeup, do that, 
question yeah. the littlest thing. Be uncomfortable also. Exactly, yeah. like me today. Yeah. Yeah. I'm here in front of a camera eating in a very uncomfortable so she's situation. An actress, that I love, that, that I, uh, I kind of enjoy. So yeah. I feel like take, just ride the wave. Ride the wave, mm-hmm. and if you feel sometimes it's getting hard and you need to talk some to talk to someone, do it. Don't mm-hmm. feel afraid for us to ask. Don't for be embarrassed. Help. Yeah, yeah, to ask for help. Because people this. are going through things, and when you're hiding, they also feel like they have to exactly. hide, and then nobody is helping anybody else. Yeah. So yeah. So for me, and that's wow. all I can say. Ask wow. for help. Yeah. Be gentle and kind to yourself. Ask yourself hard questions. Challenge Write yourself. out journey and, and learn, relearn, and. Be uncomfortable. Yeah. Be comfortable with discomfort. Yeah. When someone is doing something that you, is really against you as a person, be honest to yourself and say, no, I'm not going to take this. Mm-hmm. Because every time you take it, you're betraying yourself and you're hurting yourself even more that way because it's like you know. Deep you down, know you know you're lying to yourself. yourself. Yeah. And you know you're selling yourself short. So I say boundaries, like take your boundaries yeah, seriously. seriously. If people don't respect them, to and also I like I like what you said about yeah. first pointing out that I'm an actress yeah. and then talking about values. Because yeah. for me, yes I'm an actress and stuff like that. And yeah. I went into the industry and I said, you know what? I'm not going to go into the industry and yeah. form my values as I go along. Mm. Because I'll end up doing things that I don't want to do. Let me but go in okay with, with my values already set. That way I'll say no to anything that, that I feel fit doesn't that. fit. It's easier that way, yeah. rather than I go in and I, I'm not too sure about my values, so I'm making my values as I go along. Along mm. the way, I'll end up having done something that I wish I didn't, yeah. or maybe you do something and then you start saying you can't do this other thing, and guys yeah. are like, how come it? But you did that. You did that yeah. you know? yeah. But when you have your values set out from the get, yeah. it's like, no, I don't do this, and I don't do this, and I don't do that, and that's fine. I'll, I'll turn down jobs, I'll turn out opportunities, because yeah. I'm sticking to what's true. To, to me. me. Another one is, and I think maybe I've covered it a little bit in the boundaries one, is trust your gut or that inner voice. Or if there's something nagging you and saying, mm, 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 this does not feel right, just listen. Try and figure out, okay, is this is this real? Is this fear? Is this... But listen to it because yeah. I, I feel like personally, the, the, the times when I let myself down were times when I was ignoring that voice that was telling me, no, Sheila, this isn't the right mm-hmm. place to be. No, Sheila, this isn't someone who you want to be friends yeah. with because it doesn't feel good to be friends with them and, and so on. Was like over time, I, st- I was losing myself Ooh. because that was me. That was me speaking to me, but I wasn't listening, so I was becoming someone else entirely. And by the time I had to now kind of revert to listening again and it starts getting louder and louder, the time when I stopped, I couldn't even hear it anymore. Listen to that small voice and whatever yeah. it's telling you and yeah. it's guiding you and, yeah. and all that, yeah. Because all of us have that, like when you're being unfair to yourself, when you're lying to yourself, because guys, we lie to ourselves. <laughs> we don't just lie to some people who actually lie a lot, lie to themselves. <laughs> they even make their own lies, mm. like they do. They, they, have they, you heard they, those situations where you're like, this person actually thinks what they're saying is real and true, you know? <laughs> like you literally <laughs> lie to yourself yeah. that you believe in your own lies. Yeah. We've rambled a lot and we've gone sana sana, but I just hope that you guys will get some nuggets that will help in yeah. your journey and everything. And I feel like if you have any questions, just write in the comment section or yes. in the comments. Yeah. I'd really like to hear from you guys. Actually, this is my first video. She's as I'm gonna share her Instagram yeah. on the description box. Do write to us, write to us if you have a question for her or if you have something you resonated with that we've talked about. Write on the comment sections, share with your friends who are going through it and kind of need some of this, you know, just a confirmation that yeah. you're not the only one, everybody else has been through this or many people have been through this before and you're gonna be fine eventually, just keep going, just keep working on yourself. Yeah, and I hope you guys are doing that, I hope you're working on yourselves, that you're Drawing. always improving yourselves because that's a favor to you. And it'll always benefit you. Like it's never gonna be a waste of time. Yeah. Yeah. We might have more of these conversations because again, it's not like a one day. Yeah. This is not something you can tackle in a day. No, or not at all. It's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, love, love, <laughs> love yourself. Yeah. Love others, and yeah, be good, be safe. Yeah. So thanks for watching. This is the Sheila Bet Show. Until next week.